Okay, the next tooth we're gonna do is we're going to do number five, which is the upper right first premolar right here. So let's switch it out to the preparation. So that will be number five. Push it down all the way, make sure we have the margins below the gum line. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of separator. Again, wipe it off mostly, so you don't have the uh, wax up keep popping off of this. Make sure that we get all these little things off if we can. <coughs> Gonna make sure we don't get any dirt embedded into the wax. Make sure we do it fairly quick so that we don't get any laminations on the inside. If the wax solidifies and it shrinks a little bit and then you add more wax to it, there might be some laminations when you take the crown off the die. So just do it fairly quickly, that first coat of wax. The light areas just add a little bit more. Don't heat it up too much so it doesn't run off the edges where you see the thin wax. Okay, make sure you let it solidify enough before you push it back down because this can also crack the little. Uh, layer of wax when you push it down from the tips and it's kinda hard to grab it from both sides that could crack it by squeezing it too much so just be very careful and make sure it's down all the way you see how the margins are sitting nicely below the gum So 
so now the first thing we do is we do the cusp tips like we did with the canine you could do the point angles too if you like I like to do the cusp tips because this gives me an idea of how tall I want to make the crown so we kinda need to line it up with the canine just like that and then we do the lingual cusp Now the lingual cusp slightly slightly leans towards the mesial. So this slightly goes towards the mesial right there. You see how the other side is? The cusp tip slightly towards the mesial. Also, the mesial of the first premolar has kind of like a straightish mesial cusp bridge right here. Sometimes it's even concave slightly, depending on how the lower wears it. And then the lingual portion is, I mean the distal portion is a tiny bit rounder. Let's see how it goes a little rounder on the distal a little straighter in the mesial and then we have a uh, fairly prominent central lobe here make sure this tooth is not flat so now we go to the next step and that will be the mesial and the distal point angles and these point angles kind of line up with the point angles of the cuspid. In this case, it will be number six. the distal point angle and as usual it kind of gives us the uh, framework that we're gonna start working from So after this, we're going to complete the cusp ridges right here. We can bring that cusp tip a little bit neat to the mesial. Then with the cusp bridge on the distal. So this side will be a little bit rounder and that side will be a tiny bit flatter or maybe even a tiny bit concave. So now from here we can either do the facial surface or we can do the occlusal peripheral ridge. Peripheral ridge is basically includes the mesial and the distal marginal ridge it includes the mesial and the distal 
cusp ridge on the on the uh, buckle and the mesial and the distal cusp ridge on the lingual. So I'm going to choose to do the facial. So I'm going to do the mesial and the distal line angle first. So there's the mesial lobe of the tooth, and then we have the distal lobe of the tooth. That's where the mesial and the distal line angles are. If you want to be more specific, the mesial buccal line angle and then the distal buccal line angle. So now we do the central lobe. Remember to make that more prominent so it sticks out a little bit. The surface of the uh, buccal side of the tooth is fairly convex, so don't make it flat. It's not a central and it's not a lateral. So we have the um, central lobe right there. Now we do the cervical third which is where what is uh, located. What is located on the cervical third of number five? On the cervical third of number five is the height of contour. You see? It matches up with the second premolar. Now we're going to do the lingual surface. Okay, so this is what this is the distal cusp ridge of the lingual cusp. Mesial cusp ridge of the lingual cusp. Okay. 
Now what we need to remember of the maxillary teeth on the posterior is that the lingual cusps of the maxillary molars and premolars tend to be higher than the buccal cusps especially on the molars but also on the premolars now it's not a must because some dentitions have them shorter some dentitions longer but ideally they're supposed to be longer because of the what? because of the curve of SPI the curve of SPI runs right along here if you look at it see these cusp tips they run in a curve down and up and up and up and up and then down again so we have the curve of SPI that runs mesiodistally for all these teeth and we have the curve of Wilson which runs from laterally from one side to the other cross arch you see how there's an angle that goes this way on the molar and there's another angle that goes this way on the other side of the molar so there is a curve that's this way like this on the upper this is the curve of Wilson that's cross arch now this way we have the curve of SPI which runs like this take a note of that it's important so when you add the two curves together you're gonna end up with a sphere a sphere is like a ball and that is like if it was a cup over the tooth like this so you go this way and you also go this way so this way and this way it's like a rounded bowl shape and that curve that sphere is called the sphere of Monson so if you hear that then you'll know that it is the curve of SPI and the curve of Wilson put together so that's called the sphere of Monson. So what are we waxing now? Anybody? The mesial and the distal marginal ridges. So this will give us a framework of the occlusal of number 5 or maxillary upper right first primum. So now we're going to fill in the lingual which is fairly easy, there's no grooves on it or anything
and make sure this is all convex. So that when we take it out and fill in the interproximals, we won't break the canine. Fill it just to the margin. If you go over the margin, we're just gonna have to curve it back gently. Oops, I went over the margin a little bit. Alright, let's wait till it solidifies a little. <coughs> and then, excuse my coughs, got a little bit of a cold. And we smooth it out. Make sure we get a nice curvature for the height of contour. If we break the wax a little, then we add and smooth it out. Smoothing out slowly. Follow the curvature of that cervical line. Remember, take your nails and run it over the margin so that you can be sure that there's no raised area or missing area. So we slowly carve it down exactly where that margin is and if you didn't catch quite all of it you can go around again so that's still a little bit too uh, too curvy let's take it a little bit more And then just notice that this is the widest area of the tooth in the occlusal third. And then it kind of tapers down towards the root. Always make like a slight S 